Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. It is the 28th of the month. And when Christine and I were talking about what to do with tonight's call, um, we just saw a great opportunity because we're just like 28th of the month be a perfect time to talk about mindset, right? So like I had anticipated like all the things that I would hear this morning when I woke up and checked in with everybody. And um, what actually happened was everybody was like, just fat and happy. <laughs> and nobody had any negative mindset issues. So I'm like, well, now what am I going to talk about? Because I don't have any content. I'm just kidding. But seriously, though, I, I just want to tell you guys, I am just super proud of you. Seriously, uh, it means a ton. I feel like this is like we've all worked really hard on having a growth mindset. I think it's a sign that you guys understand that business has ebbs and flows and that right now is a snapshot of your business and it's not an indicator of where you're going to be long term, right? So where your points are today, that is not an indicator of where they could be six months from now or a year from now because you're literally one conversation away from the the thing that could change everything in your business and it can happen very very quickly okay so it's just really important keep in mind if your points are not where you want them to be which most of you guys i mean points are up overall from for my team overall my points are up um and i will say everybody that i have talked to today either their points are about where they were last month this time or they're slightly up okay so that could be why everybody's in a good headspace. But I also think it's important to understand that maintaining is growing because in our business model, you're going to fight some natural attrition and that's always going to be a thing. And so if your points are holding steady, then that's growth. And your points may be steady right now. They may be slightly up right now. They might even be slightly down right now. But if that is the case, it means that you are growing. And if you're growing right now, that is a great indicator of if you don't stop and you continue to do the things that you have been doing to this point that have produced the growth or produced the stability, then when momentum hits in the busiest times of the year, your points are going to go like way up. And it, like I said, it can happen in a very short amount of time. All right. So... I'm just really proud of you guys. Uh, I seriously am. And I also want to share a couple things with you real quick before I turn this over to Christina, because she's going to talk to you guys about how to end the month strong. But I do, I saw some really great content on Instagram today. And so it just inspired me. And I just want, it's just good reminders about a growth mindset and what it takes to succeed. And guys, I want to share with you that I have studied high performers, and I've studied millionaires because, well, mainly because out of necessity, because by nature, I tend to be a pessimist. It's just part of my personality. It's how I am wired. I tend to be glass half empty kind of person. I also tend to be skeptical, like really skeptical. Um, Always have struggled with like belief in myself, things like that. And so these are things that I've had to, like, it's kind of put me, well, I guess outside looking in, it could appear that it was a disadvantage to me. But to be honest, because I've had to work hard on these things, it's become an advantage to me because I not only can help myself with my own mindset, just by being aware of how high performers think and act and how millionaires think and act, but I also can coach others to do the same because there is a difference between the way high performers and very, very successful people think and the way people who don't go on to be very successful think and behave and act. OK, and so I've studied this from several different sources for many years. It's very interesting to me and it's very belief building to me. And when I say anybody can do this. I mean that 100% from the bottom of my heart. I know that if I can, anyone can. All right, so I need to show you guys something. Let me share my screen. Here we go. How do I move this? 
Here we go. Y'all see my screen? Okay. All right. So this business is, oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Now I can't move the thing back. I can't move it out of the way. All right, hopefully it doesn't block anything. Okay, here we go. Y'all know I've said this a million times. This business is 80% mindset. It's only 20% skill set. The skill Anybody can learn the skills, okay? A skill is just something that you can learn. It doesn't have anything to do with talent. It doesn't have anything to do with ability or a strength. None of that. A skill is simply something you, anybody can learn, right? And uh, a talent is something that people are naturally good at. You don't have to have a natural talent when it comes to these skills. I would say I probably don't have natural talent with any of the skills that it takes to grow this business, but I have been willing to learn along the way, okay? But the biggest thing that I've had to work on, which is going to be the same thing all of you have to work on, is mindset. You have to learn how to think long term. You have to learn how to think like a successful person thinks if you want to be a very successful person. All right. So I will say high performers, they have some things in common. First of all, they have clarity. And I mean, crystal clear on a few very important things. The first one is who they are. They have a certain level of confidence because they know who they are. They know their strengths. They know their weaknesses. They know their values. They know what's important to them. They know what value they're bringing to the table in their relationships or whatever. They know who they are. And so they have a certain level of confidence that is often due just simply to self-awareness. When you are self-aware, it is like a, a battle against insecurity. It makes you more confident. So high performers are clear on who they are. That's really, really important. They are also clear on what they want, what their goals are. And they're also like, do you know what you want? I'm just curious about that. Do you guys all, are you crystal clear on what exactly it is that you want and who you are? Those are things you need to be clear on. But the third thing is they have a plan. They have they they know exactly how they're going to get it and i don't mean they have all the details mapped out or they've mastered all the skills they're willing to fail forward but they have an overall plan of like oh here's what i'm going to do and and here is how i'm going to accomplish and achieve what it is i want to accomplish and achieve and then they set out and they get to work newsflash it's not just all hard work there's a lot of hard workers whose points go backwards every month or who don't go on to be successful. It's not just hard work. Is hard work required? Yes. But is it the only thing that's required? No. Okay. So they work really hard, but also they're very particular about what they're working on. That's really important because you can work really hard on the wrong things. So it's really important that you are clear on working on the right things. That's what you want to do. You need a long-term focus. Some of y'all are so short-sighted that you're focused on the short-term goal and you completely neglect thinking about what does this look like long-term? Like you're going to do what it takes to move the needle forward right now or get a bigger paycheck right now, but you neglect what's going to exponentially increase your paycheck in the future, down the road, okay? And then they're also very clear, like they're really, really particular on who they're working with. And that's really important because it's so important that you choose your inner circle according to a growth mindset. Some of y'all like to surround yourself with people that make you feel comfortable. You want to surround yourself with people that make you feel like you're the best one. Or they don't, at least they don't make you feel uncomfortable that you're looking around and you feel like you're the best one in the room or they're not like these people aren't challenging you. They're not calling you to your highest potential. They make you feel good about yourself. High performers intentionally put themselves in situations on a regular basis where they are called to a higher standard. They're not the highest performing ones. They surround themselves with people who are going to pull them up. 
not make them feel good about themselves. If you're constantly around people who make you feel good about yourself, you're probably not growing. All right. Also, they're not completely fixated on problems. This little graphic, it was just so powerful to me because people who are not extremely successful or they're like stuck and stagnant in their growth, they generally will take a problem and make it so much more massive than it is. They allow it to hold them back or keep them from moving forward or keep them from reaching their potential. And guys, I'm here to tell you that problems will never go away. Like even if you solve that problem right there, that today feels like a mountain, you solve that problem and the problem goes away tomorrow, you have a new problem, okay? Problems are to be expected. <laughs> They're an inevitable part of life, much less business, right? So it, it, they're they're always going to be here. They're here to stay. Highly successful people are problem solvers. They're not fixated on the problem. They're not blaming the problem for their lack of success. They are solving problems. And they're definitely focused more on opportunities than they are on their problems, okay? Um, and then also they're consistent. I feel like this goes without saying. This is just a friendly reminder that high performers are very consistent. They are not, I mean, you've heard me say this over and over too. Consistency beats intensity any day of the week. If you want speed, you can combine intensity with consistency, but just know that that's going to be very short term. No one can sprint long term. A sprint is a short burst. And that's about all you're going to be able to do as far as intensity, okay? So just know that. But consistency is focused on the long the, the long game, right? It's not just focused on a short-term burst. It's focused on I'm going to do, I'm going to be diligent day in, day out, and I'm going to do the things that I know will make me successful long-term regardless of how I feel about it. That is what high performers do. Okay. The last thing is they feed their faith, they starve their fear. And this is so important because it just doesn't take much. When we have a fragile mindset, it doesn't take much to derail us emotionally, mentally, something to make us lose focus. It could just be like a story from a sideline that rattled us. It could be somebody turned their sub off for the fourth time this week. It could be a business builder quits on us. It could be somebody in the jewel page or the Ruby page somewhere said something negative about their business going backward. And now you're worried that's going to happen to you. It could be anything, but high performers, they feed their faith and they will intentionally do things to starve their fear. If something is causing them to uh, become fixated on their problems or make their fear bigger in their mind, they're going to cut it out. They're going to eradicate it because they don't have time for that. They got work to do. All right. So I'm about to wrap this up. I promise, Christina. A couple of little um, inspiring graphics for you, just so you guys know how success starts and how it changes over time, it evolves. Everybody know who this is? Do y'all know who this is? Type type his name in the chat if you know who this is. I can't see the chat. So I'm just going to assume y'all know who this is. Okay, Elon Musk, obviously. All right, so big things often have small beginnings. This is SpaceX in 2002 and SpaceX in 2022. So we see how this evolved over a matter of just 20 short years. Amazon. In 1994, and here we are, less than 30 years later, everybody knows who, I mean, how many people have shopped off Amazon today? Anybody? I've shopped off Amazon today, yesterday, day four, day four that, right? So you can see how something starts very small and evolves, right? Do you think that Amazon was over there in 1994 being, were they clear on where they were going? Who, were they clear on who they needed in their inner circle? Were they starving their fear and feeding their faith? Were they focused on their problems? Like, guys, I'm telling you, these are habits of, that all high performers and highly successful people and companies have in common. Here's another example. Apple, 1975. Apple in 2022. Here's another example. Google in 1998. 
Google in 2022. See what a short amount, Google's now not just a noun, it's also a verb. I mean, think about that. In 20 years, the name, this, the company name became a verb. It's not just something, a website you go to. It's something you actually do. I Googled something. Go Google it. It's a verb, guys. In a short amount of time. We're talking a matter of a couple of decades. Here's Disney. Everybody knows who Disney is, all right? Now, here's another example. This is me hosting an event in my home in 2017. So this was just five years ago. You guys see some familiar faces there. Some of these faces you might not be familiar with, but some of them you do. Um, and it, I would also love for you to notice that the faces that you see in this picture that are that were taken in, but are still here today, they are all jewels. Every single person remaining in this picture from just five years ago, they are now jewels. All the rest of them, you probably don't know who they are, okay? So things can change very quickly in a very short amount of time because I remember hosting this event in my home. I was nervous. I was scared. I was wondering, like, is it going to be any good? Do I have what it takes to pull this off? Will people even want to come? I mean, I've hosted events before where nobody showed up, okay? And, but... This is an event where few people did show up to it, but that was five years ago. This was this year. Do you see the comparison? Just five years later, see how the number exponentially multiplied? Do you think that I didn't have fear and doubt and um, hurdles and challenges and problems along the way? People who didn't say negative things about me or misunderstand me or misjudge my intentions, people who didn't reject me, People who didn't turn off their subs, people who didn't quit on me. I've had all of these things just like you will, guys. You think there were times where I did not maintain my rank for months in a row, even as a jewel? That has all happened. Like the, the hurdles that you are jumping over right now, they are not uncommon. Like we all face the same problem. We all face the same adversity in our business. We all have the same thing, hoops that we have to jump through along the way, right? We all have things we have to overcome. If I can do it, you can do it. And so that's what I want to leave you guys with tonight is just know that right now you're working towards your long-term vision and that where you are now is not an indicator of where you're going to be one year from now or six months from now or five years from now. Imagine where you're going to be five years from now. And also, I'm so proud of the leaders on our team. Seriously, your growth in your, in not just in the hard work that you do on your business, but also the, the growth that you're doing on your mind. It's not just helping you grow. You're making an impact on others and you're helping others grow. And I'm just so proud of you guys. All right, Christina, I'm done. Go ahead. Um, well, I was just going to say like in five years, we'll have another picture and everyone who was in that first picture who just has some stickability, they'll be the topic of the next training call in five years. And we'll be saying, y'all look, everyone that you recognize in this picture, they're all six figure earners. They're all jewels. And the ones who have not stuck it out, you won't, they, 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 it won't be relevant. So here's how you'd be relevant. You'd be stickable, have some stickability. Some stickability. That means that we don't say, okay, well, I'm going to do this as long as I hit my goal by my certain day. I'm going to do this as long as I'm Ruby in time for next year's Ruby retreat. Like I'm going to do this as long as this lines up. What you need to be saying is I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this regardless of what obstacle pops up. I'm going to do this regardless of what I have to learn. I'm going to do this. Other people have learned it. I can too. Okay. So I am going to tell you how to end the month strong if it lets me share my screen all right so i love everything Brittany said i concur about mindset y'all we had a conversation today culture really we got something so special here because we're not just a few leaders who are trying to have a growth mindset all i mean even down to our brand new business builders who are here 
we're all collectively together looking for solutions. We're all collectively together, not making some problem mean anything about us. Like we're here going, okay, this is a problem. What is the, some potential solutions? Okay, great. Let's let's jump in with that one. Let's try something. So I'm also very, very proud of you guys. Um, so I said something earlier. Brittany said, oh, that's good. You need to say that to Nile and Team Call. So I have big goals. Some people think, I think when you get to Diamond, they're like, okay, well, maybe her goals, like what's next? And I'm over here like, what's next? We're just scratching the surface. Like there's so much I want to accomplish and see and do and help people with. And there's so, like, I have such a crystal clear vision of what I want my life to look like and how I want my team's lives to look. And so I'm like, all right, well, here's my plan. This is my plan to end the month strong. Like I've got an in-person event. I had several calls today. I'm leading this call tonight. Um, my plan is to work until 11:59 on Wednesday night, just going to close the month out strong. And Brittany was like, that's what people need to hear. They just need to hear what it looks like to just go ham in short bursts, we're consistent all the time, but then sometimes you just work with that intensity to show people what it takes. This is what it takes. And this is what it's about. So how can you end the month strong? Well, I want to talk to you, first of all, if you are super close to your goal, this call is for you. And if you are far from your goal, whatever you set your goal, maybe um, November 1st, they sent out the rollout and you know you saw that you could earn this much money. Now, these are just the bonuses. This isn't the, the welcome pack bonuses that you get. This isn't the points that you get. There's a lot of money on the table, okay? For a lot of you, if you were to hit these goals, it's also including a rank up or two, right? So bunch of money on the table. And so you saw this, maybe you set that, I'm going to enroll six and develop a silver. That's my goal. And here we are on the 28th and you're thinking, oh crap. <laughs> I'm, I'm further from my goal than I would like to be. So at this point, you have two options, okay? It's gonna be just as easy for you to let yourself off the hook and say, there's always next month. Maybe next time. Well, Thanksgiving threw a wrench in it. So I, I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. Or you can say, you know what? I set this goal. There's still several solid days in the month left. There's massive amounts of incentives on the table. I had never seen anything like it. Um, you got all the reasons to continue pushing toward your goal. We've had people go silver in an hour, like crazier things have happened. So you have the opportunity here to have some stickability. And so I'm going to blow through this. So just know like all of these follow-up messages for how to end the month strong, they're going to be available to you. Just hold tight. Okay. First of all, what do you have to, what, what's the number one thing when it comes to ending the month strong? Realistic expectations, friends. You can't wait until the 28th of the month and think that I'll message 10 people, hit all my goals, okay? The people who are getting the results that you wish you were getting, they're reaping the work that they've been doing for the last 30, 60, 90 days, okay? Um, so that should encourage you because if you want to start having some of their results, just be willing to do the work they've been doing consistently for the next 30, 60, 90 days. This is how you create a strong spring. Okay, spring is fun in our industry. Spring is real fun, but it's only fun for those who have put in the legwork in the November, the December, the January, et cetera. So expect to have to overcome, uh, I should say objections. Expect that people will have objections multiple times. Just because someone has a question or needs some perspective about products or affordability or, um, how to fit it into their schedule or whatever. This it doesn't mean anything about their willingness to try what you're asking them to try. Just lean in and expect to have to help them overcome these objectives. Okay, expect to have to help invest in helping people build belief in themselves. We're in the sales industry. We're also in the health and wellness industry. Okay, here's what you need to know about people. They have let themselves down in this area repeatedly. They beat themselves up. They miss goals. They let themselves off the hook. Like they are so hard on themselves already. There's a million things they've invested in and not followed through with. Like they've got all this baggage. So expect to have to invest in helping them build their belief and their ability to be consistent with this. This could be the last new thing they ever have to try if they're just willing to change some habits. So pour that belief into them. And I'm going to teach you next week how to do that with tools that we already have available. Expect to have to counteract objections um, that, that they come across because it feels like rejection, right? 
Um, hold people accountable to what they say they want. Okay, we're flying, y'all. Okay, here's what I want you to think about before we get into the sample messages. Imagine this. What if you really chose to see yourself as a diamond and worked with that kind of passion and conviction all the time? I don't mean full-time hours, y'all. I didn't build this working full-time hours. I did build this with passion and conviction that I knew without a shadow of a doubt I would figure out how to be a diamond. I didn't care how long it took. I didn't, I didn't care. I was just going to do it. That passion and conviction, guys, listen, it's got to show up on the first of the month and on the sixth of the month and on the 12th of the month. It's got to show up on the 15th and the 21st. It's got to show up on the 28th and the 30th. That passion and conviction has got to be here all the time. It doesn't mean that we always want to do what needs to be done. Okay, don't be fooled by that. Doesn't mean that it's all rainbows and unicorns, but it means that I believe with everything that I am that I know where I'm going, okay? What if we worked like that every week of every month? What if magic week was just every week? What if you cared? Oh, this is a hard one for me, y'all. Listen, I'm, pre I'm talking just to, I mean, just as much to myself, y'all. Know that, okay? What if you cared just as much about your team hitting their next rank as you do about hitting that incentive for yourself this month. See, what happened for some of you is you set that goal of enroll six, you set that at the beginning of the month, and then you let your brain go there. And you said, okay, if I had enrolled six, what would that take of me? What would I have to do to make that happen? And you formulated a plan from the goal backwards and you executed. You did that. Congratulations. What if we did the same thing with our team and their goals. What if I said, all right, for Sally to hit gold this month, what would she need to be equipped with? And then work backwards with just as much gusto for helping other people win. And I said this earlier, people are getting results today because of work they have put in for the last 30, 60, 90 days. Change your current actions, change your future results, okay? All right. Following up for the end of the month. Guys, listen, this whole follow-up system is in guide five in Freedom Team. There's nothing new under the sun here, okay? It's there for you. But sometimes it's nice to see a couple samples. So three different sample messages. Um, you'll see the difference in each one. Hey, Samantha, what do you guys have planned for end of the month? Have you started decorating for Christmas yet? I know when we connected earlier in the month, Plexus was something that you were interested in. So wanted to pop back in since we only have a few days left in the month. And I did not want to let this opportunity for the discount slip by. So just wanted to see if you had any questions that I could answer for you or if you're ready to go ahead and get started. So this person was obviously open at some point. Message number two. Hey, Samantha, I know before when we were chatting back and forth, Plexus seemed like it was a good fit for you. So I wondered if I could ask you, what's keeping you from jumping in and wanting to get started? Sometimes you'll have those that will just string you along. Sometimes it's okay to just say, hey, listen, what's holding you back, friend? Like, I, I feel like this would be a great fit. I feel like we've answered all your questions, like what's keeping you from getting started? And then, uh, hey, Samantha, I know we haven't had a chance to connect yet. This is somebody that hasn't responded. Um, I totally get that this is a hectic time of year. However, if you're like most people I've talked to, Thanksgiving has you ready for a good mental and physical reset. So just popping back in, I gotta move the thing, y'all, hold on. Uh-oh, just kidding. Can y'all see that or no? You can't, okay, well, I don't know what it says because y'all are blocking it. Just pop, pop it back in to see if maybe now is a better chance to, I don't know, whatever it says, screenshot it. Um, but basically, we haven't had a chance to connect. I'm letting you off the hook because I know this month is crazy, Christmas, Thanksgiving, et cetera. However, this is a great time when people are looking towards hitting some health goals. Can I be of service? There's lots of fun deals on the table. Would love to help. Okay, <clears throat> so... Guys, this, people ask me this all the time. How do I know when to follow up? What do I do? This is all in that guide. But if people are responding and then stop, it's okay. Nothing is wrong. There's nothing wrong. People are busy and Plexus isn't their top priority. This is normal. So go back to that three-day timeline and continue following up with that. Okay, so you guys will see if, the, if three days later, if they no response, I'll go 10 days. If there's no response after that, I'm putting them a month out. Still no response, another month out. And I tell you in that guide exactly what to do at those follow-ups. Sometimes it's invite them to an event. Sometimes it's offer a sample. Sometimes it's send a testimony. Like I give you very tangible things to do, but this is the timeline response. 
And every time they'll, sometimes they'll engage three or four times and I'll have to do this whole timeline three or four times. That's okay. It's normal. It's about them. It's not about me. I don't let that mean anything about me. Okay. I know we got to fly. I'm sorry. All right. Closing the deal. Here's your top closing phrases. <clears throat> From all the information I sent you, what could you relate with the most? Sometimes we send information and we never solicit their feedback. We want to know what, what stood out to you. What could you relate with? You guys, here's something that I find repeatedly. Sometimes people don't close the deal because they don't ask for the sale. Somehow we feel like, oh gosh, what do I say? Like, I don't know. Like, if they're ready, they'll tell me that is not true. That is not true. Listen, if you've been in your inbox any this week from Black Friday sales and Cyber Monday sales, Kohl's and Target and Best Buy, they're not assuming if you want something, you'll come to them. They are all up in your space. And many of you have given in and you've made purchases, right? Because you're thankful for the follow-up. That's how you need to be. Okay. Uh, number two, since it sounds like Plexus would be a great fit for you, were you ready for me to help you get your products ordered? Or did you have a few more questions for me? Ask that question and nothing more. Just say, hey, sounds like it'd be a great fit. You ready to go? Or did you have another question? And then assume the close. If they have no questions, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it all sounds good. Fantastic. Why don't I go ahead and give you a call real quick? I'll walk you through the enrolling process. At that point, if you offer to go ahead and get them started, it's going to uncover if they do have a hesitation. Like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm ready, but my husband, like he wants me to whatever, like it'll just give it, give you a chance to see what, what could be holding them back. Or they're going to say, yeah, I can talk at 3.30. Does that work for you? Sure does. Okay. Let me ask you, do you see this as a good fit for you? Are you ready to get started? If yes, great. Let's get on the phone, walk you through it. If not, let, let me walk you through the website, whatever your uh, MO is. Um, this is totally a free freebie tip. Guys, it's really good customer service to offer to set up people's account for them. I will say all the time, listen, is it most convenient for you, for me to take the time to set your account up? Because I'm totally willing to do that. That's what the majority of my customers prefer. So you let me know if that's best or if you'd like for me to call you to walk you through it. If you, if you can get their information, it prevents any website issues. It prevents any confusion on how to order, what to order, just good customer service. Um, if they say, no, I just, I don't think I'm ready. Great. Well, what info do you, what do you need to make a decision? What do you think it would require for you to be ready? Okay. Um, and then I, you know, sometimes if they have an objection, I'll say, listen, Sally, money, I get that. Like I was a teacher, I was on a fixed income. I didn't have a lot of money to invest either. But what I found is if I did not change something with my health, nothing would ever change. In fact, it would probably get worse. So for me, it, I had to just see it as a loving investment for myself. Um, curious, like if you don't do something about A, B, and C, how's that going to look for you and your family in a couple of years? Like, how's that going to, how's that going to show up then? Uh, okay. And so you're continuing to say, okay, well, now that I've answered that question, do you feel better about getting started? If not, okay, listen, I want to be respectful of timing because I'm completely confident that when you're ready to make this a priority, our products are going to help you a ton. Since you're not quite ready, why don't I drop you a sample in the mail? I'd love for you to experience the ease of fitting it in and the delicious flavor. So at this point, I have taken her through the process repeatedly. I've attempted to close the deal repeatedly. Now I'm going to respect the distance and I'm going to take a different approach and just say, listen, let me, let me drop you a sample. Guys, by the time I get to this point, we're probably talking six, eight months in. I, don't, I very rarely have to utilize samples, just FYI. But if that just seems like nothing else is working, then I will offer that. Okay, and then I think this is always really important. Sometimes you see the people who are ranking up or the ones who are earning the incentives or the ones whose points are up. Maybe your points are down this month. And now Brittany's like, most people's points are up. And you're like, well, darn, <laughs> that's not me. That's been me, okay? I have been the, like, the oddball out. Like, oh my gosh, my points are down. Everyone else is up. What am I doing wrong? Just know you can study other people's efforts. You can emulate their willingness to learn. Don't wish for what other people have. Be willing to work like they have been willing to work. I promise the results come from work that you've not probably been privy to. But the good news is, is the work is there to be done. And the fact that people are getting the results that you want means that it is possible 
And sometimes that's all we really are looking for is some hope, like some hope, like this is, this is worth it. Oh yeah, this is worth, it's worth it because that girl over there just hit that rank that I want. That's hope for me that I can do. Um, so basically what we wanted to, to end tonight with was there's plenty of time left in the month to hit those goals. You are capable of far more than you imagine. Trust me. And listen, I'm over here. Brittany and I are very successful. You're going to continue to see us pound this month. You're going to see us in the month strong. We're here. If you've got questions, guys, you have access to group chats that you can ask questions in. Message us at your upline. Message somebody and say, hey, listen, this is the conversation I got going on. Here's what I think I should say. What are your thoughts? Or here's what I think the objection is. Am I on the right track? Ask for critical feedback. Feedback is the one thing you can't get from training videos alone. So if you're consuming all this training, but your results aren't changing, it's probably feedback that you need. And you can't wait for your leader to come and try to ask you for your, go solicit that feedback. Go and say, give me feedback. What am I missing? Like, help me understand. That is what high achievers are doing. High achievers are fine. Like they're willing to create and reveal problems within themselves if it means that it's gonna lead to a solution and results. So. Um, way to go on November, you guys. Pumped. Uh, I'm super excited about December. We've got some fun things planned. Can't wait to share the calendar with you guys. Um, and we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, guys.